All right, guys. Here we got an Allison transmission. It's an LCT 1000 series. We're gonna do a teardown inspection and see what it's gonna need. Uh, the unit was brought in just for uh, a shift kit. Supposedly, it's working perfectly. It's a contractor, so he wants to beef it up. It's a lean, mean machine, but instead of lean, he wants to beef it up. Model 1000 series, and this is where we're going to put in this transmission. But we're going to go ahead and uh, do a teardown inspection and see if it needs uh, some new clutches so we can refresh this unit. We're going to clean it all up install that uh, reprogramming kit is going to fix a lot of problems that are associated with this unit and uh, make it a good workforce all right i flipped this unit around so you can have a better picture on the opposite side uh, here you can see it's got the cooler return filter that's very noticeable on all allisons you have the uh, rpm sensor which the transmission uses as an engine RPM and the engine does also use it as an engine RPM as well now you have here the turbine speed sensor which is on the body of the transmission and this being a 4x4 unit we don't see the output speed sensor here because the output speed sensor is mounted on the transfer case itself so what we see here the RPM sensor and the turbine speed sensor okay I have already removed all the outer bolts to remove the bell housing is part of the pump the pump is part of the bell housing so I have already removed all the outer bolts as you can see now you have some bolts also right here you have another one right there and on the opposite side as well as you can see there's still one bolt in there because of the cooler line fitting is interfering on it but it's already off it's already loose so we can just pull this bell housing off all right guys there it is isn't that impressive just look at the size of that input drum right there that is the pump now we need to remove this 10 millimeter bolts and the rest of the bolts that were in the front in the bell housing and that way we can separate the pump from the bell housing okay now that we got our bolts off from the front and the back I just want to point out something uh, just to give, give it to your attention see these are the bolts that were attached and holding the pump itself see how they got a little rubber o-ring on it now the ones that hold the bell housing they don't have anything on it so that's the difference between the two and uh, these ones that don't have anything on it it is recommended that you put a bit of silicone because the bell housing is a little rough and it could create a leak and since we're only doing a reprogramming kit on this uh, what we're going to do to those bolts as well we're going to add a little bit of silicone to aid those washers and prevent them from uh, leaking everything in this transmission is massive I mean you can just look at it and uh, it's an awesome transmission It's very strong it can hold a lot of horsepower and as you can see here's the pump that's the plate and there's your pump gears and uh, here are the 10 millimeter bolts that were on the opposite side of the bell housing and as you can see here that's your bell housing the pump goes right in here now the cool thing about this kit is that those gaskets that are on this plate, I mean, they are supplied in the kit. So just in case you're just going to refresh this unit and just install that kit, I mean, this is basically all you need. And maybe just a pan gasket and the gasket for the extension housing. But the kit itself, uh, all it addresses is just the front part of the transmission and uh, on the valve body. So basically everything that you need is already supplied but now we're going to remove the c1 and the c2 clutch drums okay now we take the snap ring off just 
get this bearing out of the way. Move that sun gear. Okay, so this is the C1 clutch and this is the C2 clutch. C1s, let's check them out. They're really in good shape. Now we can check the C1 clutch. Okay, for that, we're going to remove the internal spiral snap ring, the other snap ring. This is a little stiffer. But it'll come out. There you go. Now let's go ahead and inspect this clutches here. Wow. For being a contractor, I mean this this unit looks pretty cherry. And on that shift kit, I mean this this is as far as you go. You just tear this drum out, do the upgrades on here, do the valve body, and you're all set. Okay, now we're going to remove the C3 clutches and uh, I have partially removed this snap ring and if you notice this opening was at the one o'clock position. Okay, well see we got the C3 clutches. Now this clutch on this side looks pretty pretty good. And here you see the pressure plate that goes in the back right against the piston. It has the return springs, right? So this is the bottom plate actually, this is not the pressure plate. Now we flip this over, you can see just a little bit where it was a little bit slipping, right? So now we check our steels, and the steel just looks good, but it has a little bit of heat marks there. And this clutch, you can see where it was uh, slipping a little bit, okay, on both sides, heat mark heat mark which these heat marks are just no big deal I mean you can buff them out no big deal okay slipping like slipping heat mark heat mark okay C3 clutches guys C3 clutches now this is the pressure plate you have a little heat marks there just like that I mean it's nothing basically uh, this unit is uh, built for more than that so this is the C3 clutch pack and here we got the C3 piston the molded piston pistons in good shape nice and soft Okay, so we're going to reuse that. Just remember guys, this unit was working properly. And uh, we went and test drove it, no coach present. They just wanted, instead of a lean mean machine, they want to beef it up. So that's what we're doing here guys. Just remember, this is a contractor's truck. Even though you have those heat marks there, and the transmission was slipping a little bit, it could be that he had maybe eight to 10,000 pounds of uh, shingles on a trailer loaded and that's what caused that no big deal now we are going to remove the extension housing now the extension housing itself has a piston in it so we're going to remove it we're going to inspect the C5 and the C4 clutches C5s are behind and then the C4 clutches are in front right here alright guys once you take the bolts off that spring right there will push the extension housing off and uh, that's how much pressure that spring has here is the rear planet and uh, here is the piston that I was talking to you about is the C5 piston okay now this right here you have to uh, clock it you have to align it with the lube hole okay so let's remove this return spring here well you have the parking pole isn't that amazing? That's just massive. Do you think this truck will go anywhere in park? I don't think it'll roll. Okay, so let's just take that off. Don't worry about this spring. This spring comes in the kit, so it always gets damaged on this assembly. Just 
go ahead and pull it out. No big deal. Okay, so now take that off. And here's the planner. These are the C5 clutches. Now this is what I'm talking about right here. See that hole right there? This hole here has to be aligned with one of these notches, okay? So whenever you go back to assemble this, you know, just make sure that it is aligned there. That's a loop circuit. Put this to the side. Now let's take the B5 clutches out. B5 clutches are in good shape. Oh yeah, in real good shape. B5 clutches. Now we have the B4 clutches there where they, we need to inspect as well. And as you can see, it has a double snap ring. But if you notice on the B3, on the C3 clutches, it was, uh, the opening was positioned at the one o'clock position, which is gonna be on this side where the turbine speed sensor is. Well, this one is also at the one o'clock position, but it's on the opposite side. That doesn't mean anything. It could be, it could go either or, but just remember that it is going towards the top of the clock. Okay, I don't know if you notice in between the B4 and the B5 clutches. Remember I mentioned that it was at the one o'clock position. Okay, we'll show that, but it has a double, a double snap ring uh, to separate the both. And the next one is just a spiral snap ring that you would remove. So, now we can inspect the B3 clutches. B3 friction, looks good, okay, let's continue going in there, the steel, no heat marks, friction, good shape, steel, no heat marks, friction you can barely tell barely 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 tell so if you can see a little bit of difference in the coloring there we're just gonna go ahead and replace these so there you go now we have the other piston or the molded piston that's it That's all of the internals. Now we can move to the more exciting part, which is the valve body.